that work? Does that work? I'm asking the questions here. <laughs> Hey everybody, Steve here with Little Wars TV. I'm at Historicon 2018 and uh, very excited to have the opportunity to talk with Historical Miniatures Gaming Society or HMGS President Scott Landis. How are you today, Scott? Great. Awesome. Thank you very much. Now, for, for those people who may not be familiar with what exactly Historicon is, why don't we first uh, talk about that. What is Historicon? Historicon is at one point called the mother of all Warren Gaming Conventions in the United States. It is our flagship gaming convention for the Historical Miniature Gaming Society. We are predominantly in the Mid-Atlantic area, but we draw together between two and 3,000 uh, attendees for Historicon every year in, in July. And this year we're in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. We uh, have four days of awesome participation gaming. We have vendors, we have flea markets. We just have, we have it all. If you've been following us on Facebook uh, at Little Wars TV or Instagram or, or even on Twitter, you've probably seen some of the photographs and, uh, that we've been taking of some of these really fantastic looking games. The, the craftsmanship that's on display here can be really, really impressive. It, it is amazing what our GMs can do uh, with, you know, very, in some cases, very little money, the creativity and the passion that they have, particularly about not just the history that's involved, but the tactics and how the organizations of these units are put together. And it is just fabulous, the, some of the things. And again, strong emphasis. We are at participation games. Everybody gets involved. GMs are taking people that walk up. Uh, very friendly atmosphere. I think a lot of people out there think of this hobby, historical miniature wargaming, as being kind of old, pale guys. But uh, that's not necessarily the case, is it? No. Um, one of the things that the organization has really tried to do in, in a strong focus over the last couple of years in particular is to engage the younger, what we call the young guard, uh, bring them into the hobby, um, to make the barriers to entry as low as we can. And so some of the activities we're doing now is we're working directly with uh, PTA organizations, uh, parent-teacher organizations or associations at uh, elementary and middle schools and in, in some cases even high schools to start getting those uh, kids engaged and we actually support them with funds uh, to help them uh, get materials to actually do war games. We have some of our GMs volunteer to help them. They really are, we are really trying to get that uh, next generation of gamers involved and engaged. And we're seeing some here today, as you said. We have families here, um, and we have some of those kids from those game days. And one of the things they're doing on their own is starting to look at competitions between schools, which oh, would be fantastic. interesting to yeah. see yeah, absolutely. how that goes. So we're really looking forward to it. And, and one of the things I've noticed, too, is uh, particularly for some of the younger gamers, uh, it may surprise some of our viewers who have never been here to see that there are some non-historical games out there. There are some sci-fi or, or fantasy games. Warhammer, I know, is, is played quite a bit. And I, I think some people might be surprised by that because the name is Historicon. And what's, what's your view on those non-historical games that do make up a significant percentage, though I think it's like 20, 25 percent in any given Right. Con? It depends on the convention, but yes, it's, a, it's around the 20 percent mark. Um, that has been a bit debate over the years. Um, one of the realizations currently of both the board members and the convention directors is that we want to open ourselves to the younger gamers and have them uh, be comfortable at the convention. And uh, some of them, you know, that's the games they play now. But to get them to ex exposure to see some of these games, some of the convention directors uh, are, you know, encouraging them through special games that are set up for, um, you know, young adults and uh, and kids. But in addition to that, uh, you know, the GMs themselves uh, really go out of their way to help engage and work with them. And so our hope, and we've seen it to be very successful, is is that if we can engage the younger gamers in games that they're comfortable with, you know, they will come back and play war games again and again. And that's what our hope is, and we're seeing that pay off for us. Well, I, I know that for a lot of the members of, of our club, they started out playing Warhammer. Uh, or D&D. And, and, and while I didn't, the actual, the first time I visited an HMGS convention, the very first game I played was a Battletech game because I remembered playing it when I was, you know, much younger. And, and it was exactly that. I felt comfortable stepping into it and from there branched out and, and now I'm, a, I'm pretty much a, a historicals guy. Uh, so it, it can be used for, for a great amount of outreach. 
Okay, so we've been talking about uh, a lot about Historicon, but HMGS is more than just Historicon. I, I know there's some other conventions that maybe you want to talk about, and maybe some of the other things you haven't mentioned that HMGS does outside of the convention realm. Oh, ac absolutely. So HMGS uh, mission is is to put forward or bring forward to the public the the benefits and the value of historical miniature wargaming in both understanding history, uh, learning to love you know history and the things that are associated with it, as well as the, the elements of the hobby. So key elements, we have a hobby university. I believe they run 40 events or more at a given weekend of uh, painting, sculpting, airbrush, uh, every technique that you can imagine. And, and these are artists that are teaching these classes. These are not, you know, someone like me trying to paint. I mean, these are real artists and they, you know, go through color theory, they go through shading, they go through all those elements. And so from that perspective, we teach that part of the hobby. We also work with um, organizations that are supporting history outside of the programs. Uh, one organization uh, supports the Olympia. Uh, we support them. There are feeder organizations, there are clubs. We support them in their local cons. But HMGS does run three conventions a year. The first one is Cold Wars. That occurs in the March time frame. That's a three-day event. Historicon, where you guys are at, is a four-day event in July. And then we have Fall In, which is a three-day event as well, and that's in the November time frame. And what we do is, is we try to spread those out through the year. Uh, we get over 70 vendors and it gives the opportunity for our attendees, our members, to actually uh, be able to uh, see the materials that they would like to buy, get it from the vendors, or you pre-order it and they can pick it up. Uh, as I said with the vendors, about 70 of them, and uh, we have it all mixes from uh, historical research and books through classic game figures, terrain, and so forth. We also have flea markets, or what we call Wally's Basement. That's a, a, a bring and buy uh, type of event. My favorite thing to see uh, in the dealer hall was now we've got 3D scanning of attendees' faces, and then they're sculpted and put onto a 28 millimeter figure. Of yourself. So. Uh, of yourself, so you can be commanding your own armies, and, and I thought that was the coolest thing. Uh, but we don't make any money off of Little Wars TV, so I can't afford it. <laughs> Now you're fairly new in the position as, right. as president of HMGS, right? Yes, uh, I just was selected as president. Uh, we just uh, introduced a new, three new members to our board of directors. Uh, this is my, I'm going into my sixth year on the board. Uh, prior to this, I was the vice president uh, for three years and before that I was convention operations. So I uh, have seen quite a few uh, elements of the, that portion of the conventions and I've supported a number of conventions as the vendor hall coordinator or vendor hall okay. manager. In your, in your uh, tenure uh, over the years and, and looking forward now in the position of president of HMGS, what do you think is your biggest challenge and, and maybe it's something we've already talked about that you're facing and what are your goals uh, for the say the next five years for HMGS? So for the next five years for HMGS, I'll start with that first. Uh, we would like to continue to expand and grow this hobby to reach out to, as I said, the young guard. Sure. Uh, we think that that is very important for us to be able to um, keep, you know, growing the hobby, um, and and to kind of open our outreach. And this is part of it. So that's why we really appreciate you guys coming to talk to us because growing the hobby. Uh, a lot of that is, is being able to get out and engage folks. A lot of folks don't understand or don't know this hobby, and so it's important for us to do that outreach. Um, one of the biggest challenges we have beyond outreach and, and getting this information to folks is really being able to uh, engage with the membership at a level that they uh, feel comfortable uh, year over year coming to the shows. Um, we we have new convention directors. Uh, all of them are very uh, experienced folks working at our conventions and other conventions, um, and they are trying to work new uh, techniques and new uh, ideas to try to work with our membership because we are a member-run organization, and that is what we're about: to work with our membership to help them get reinvigorated, re-engaged, get that passion back to come to our shows. So that's what we're really, that's our biggest challenge right now is, is to kind of bring those folks back, kind of get them back engaged to it. 
Well, I certainly wish you the best of luck. Scott, thank you very much for talking with thank us you. here. Thank uh, you guys for coming, and we hope you have a great rest of your show here. Thank you for helping us, you know, kind of engage with the larger public, um, and we look forward to having you guys come back again. Would this be a bad time, uh, Greg, to tell him about how few subscribers we have? <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah. And, and on that point, perhaps uh, you, if you're watching this video, would like to click the subscribe button down below or follow us on Facebook or Instagram or Twitter at Little Wars TV. And if you're interested about anything that you've heard here about Historicon or HMGS, be sure to visit their website at HMGS.org. And you guys are on Facebook as well? Yes, we are. We have a site. And I'll be honest, I don't remember what the site is. I apologize. I'm not on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> well, the old guard is not on Facebook. Yeah. The young guard, I actually, I think my daughter tells me that the young guard isn't on Facebook either. So it's just a bunch of Russians, apparently. But anyway, thanks for watching. We will get that Facebook information, and we'll put it in the, uh, the info below. So check that out, and uh, we'll see you next time on Little Wars TV. Thanks again. Uh, because it's clearly not. <laughs> it's most this certainly is, this not. This is the product of 15 minutes worth of hasty craft work on uh, <laughs> Wednesday night. That's awesome. Uh, it should look good on camera. If, or did if you want me to just stare at it the whole time? <laughs> you could do that too. You just just, like, like, just stare the at the your hell? thing. Uh, for for a whole time. Yeah, yeah. 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 Is this on? If I get a little over aggressive with it, yeah. that's for comedic effect.